The next one is um, which healthy substitute have you used in the past for sugar? And so we have maple syrup, we have chopped dates, um, no chopped prunes. I, I really want y'all to step out of your fear with prunes because they are an excellent substitution. And then also fresh fruits, and you can also use raisins as well. And then number four, um, Linda, can you read that? Yes, um, plant-based milk. It looks like plant-based milk. Everyone's familiar with that. It's used that. Uh, plant-based yogurt. Non-dairy. Oh, that's good. Non-dairy powdered creamer. That's that's good. No one's using it. That's right. Nutritional yeast can be used for cheese. Yes. So, you know what? We threw that non-dairy powdered creamer in there because we all should realize that on the label, although it says non-dairy, it does have casein milk protein in there. So that is not a vegan meal and of course, or a vegan option. And, uh, you know, this is touted as a whole food plant-based charcuterie board. That's how I pronounce it. Um, class. So everything that we do is going to be based on our um, vegan or our whole food plant base. So um, let's see, I just saw something. So tell them about the chat box maybe. Okay, so um, Kathy and Vicki are running our chat box, but let's see, I have a question. Won't you let that I am listening? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and then the last question is, what substitutions can we use for oil? Now, if you're sauteing onions, you wanna saute those either in water or vegetable broth. And vegetable broth is the very first one there. Water is the next one. You can also use applesauce in your baking in place of oil. So everybody did very, very well on those. Of course, you if you wanted to, you could also use um, wine in there, but not everybody wants to. So we are, um, I'm trying to get onto speaker view, Kathy. There, okay. So let's just start with a couple of quickies. First of all, uh, we have four different boards. These are uh, made in the USA and um, it is mountain wood. So when you're buying a board, you wanna make sure that one is going to be a hardwood board. You don't want soft wood because some of the, of the whatever you're putting on could seek into the board and it could cause it to um, carry bacteria. But with that said, you also want to wash your boards with warm soapy water afterwards. If you are someone who is going to be using meat, mm -hmm. you want to have a meat board and you never want your fruit, your vegetables, or any of your other things to be on that meat board, okay? Um, and also, the there are provisions for cutting board food safety. The USDA has that. And we also have, um, the Academy for Nutrition and Dietetics also has information on boards. So we, um, we encourage you to go on those two websites and see what they have to say, because certainly you would not want a board that is going to be harboring bacteria and it's going to be harmful. And it, certainly the very first time you use it, Linda, you may not have that issue, but repeatedly, you're and, going and to. Sometimes if you're using acidic kinds of fruits and vegetables, it will, uh, if you don't have the right kind of board, that will leach into the board. And so that's the, the purpose of, of getting a good board that you can clean very well. Yeah. So another thing, um, you know, today we really want to talk to you about having a healthy and light holiday season. My newsletters over the last two months have really focused on um, lightening up the holidays, what we can do to make sure that our holidays are not going to be 
um, costing us a lot of weight, you know, added weight, because, you know, five to 10 pounds is the average for um, our American population. In my cookbook that I sent out or that I made eligible or available the week of Thanksgiving, the very first part of it was healthy substitutions. And so I want to show you this. And um, if you did not download that cookbook, it is available for you. It is free. So I do hope that you will um, download that. But really great healthy substitutions. And we're going to be talking about those today. Okay. So, you know, life is short, folks. We want to wow our guests. And even though we may only be entertaining our immediate family for this COVID season, we certainly want to make sure that we let them know that this is still a very special season and that they are a special people for us. And, um, you know, so let's still make this holiday um, tremendous, right? So we're going to wow them. Yeah. Uh, we had several comments about the board. You really stirred some conversation. Oh, okay. Somebody wanted to know where you got Naomi. Naomi wanted to know where you got the board because it's really pretty, but it's also a good size. And um, Vicki mentioned that she likes a teak board. Andrea asked, is Oak okay? Um, and are there any specific types of wood that would be best, says Andrea? Okay, so your hardwood, um, hardwood and not softwood. And so one time I had a conversation with somebody who was a, a wood expert. And, um, you know, I think your oak may be going softer, but also your cypress would be softer. But I think, um, I can't answer that. I apologize. I, I, I was just going to look that we had looked at uh, I don't what the know. recommendations, hardwood, not softwood. Yeah, but I don't think this goes into the hardwood. This is more how to clean it. Yeah, okay. Um, I know that teak is a good wood for that kind of thing, and also a lot of people are moving more to um, bamboo. Right, uh, but you know what? There was something that, you know what? I, I, I'm going to ask Rachel. Rachel, are you available? Because I know you did. Rachel was my intern this semester. She was fabulous. Rachel, if you are on, you really did some digging into what the proper boards were. Um, honestly, I, I don't know if I have an answer for that either. I'm... I couldn't tell you. I'm not told 100% sure about the correct boards for cooking and whatnot. Okay, you know what? The USDA recommends bamboo cutting boards because they're less porous than hardwoods. Huh? And harder. And they're harder. No, they're, um, they're harder and less porous than hardwoods. And you know what? The site that I saw said to do hardwoods. So... You know what? I can find out and I can let y'all know. How is that may be a topic for one of my newsletters. <laughs> Follow up. Yeah. Follow up. Yeah, that's a good idea. Dennis also said that bows, B O O S or booze main boards, uh, he's used his for eight plus years. So that may be a brand to look for too. Okay. Okay. So anyway, where did I get this? Um, all the boards today came from Tuesday morning and they had several boards um, we tried to get the hardest wood that we could find and um, and all of them are beautiful so um, actually I had no clue that I was going to buy four boards but they were all beautiful and there was no way I could turn them down so um, there was a new shipment and I hope that the shipment is still available okay so we're talking about wowing our guests we're talking about lightening up and we are talking about having fun. These boards can be done for anything. So I want you to step out of the box when you're thinking about boards. But the very first board we have is going to be for desserts. Life is short. 
and everybody loves dessert, so why not put your best foot forward on the desserts? So, um, also I want you to know that you are going to be receiving the little cookbook or booklet of all of these recipes. And some of them were in my holiday magic cookbook that I did right before the holidays or before Thanksgiving. Uh, and, and Linda was my co-editor, so you know, I'm always dragging her in on these fun festivities. But anyway, um, you will be receiving this probably tomorrow morning, okay? So let's start. And Linda, you want to put the first one down? Oh, yeah. Why don't we start with some chocolate hummus? Okay, so our chocolate hummus is, um, is actually a very good, it's called Chocolate Brownie Delight. And certainly it is very, very tasty. It is made not only with garbanzo beans, but it is also made with a silken tofu. And I like adding tofu to my hummus just to make it smoother. Also, all of the chocolate, I'm going to say now, is made with the Hershey's Cocoa um, Special Dark. And just to let you know, um, once again, lightening up, when we look at the calories here, it's only 10 calories per tablespoon and uh, only a half a gram of fat. And when you look at pure chocolate, like the cacao nibs, we see that this has 150 calories and 14 grams of fat, nine of those are saturated fat. So once again, we want to lighten up as much as possible. Our cocoa is a safe alternative when we're doing our, our meat, I mean not our meat, our chocolate. Okay, and then we're going to add our carrot cake hummus. And um, carrot cake hummus is very, very simple. We're making with carrots. The recipe will be include pineapple. It has raisins, it has dates in it. It has all of the beautiful flavors of our um, carrot cake, but it does not have all of the guilt or the fat that would be laden with it. Okay, what shall we do next? Oh, Linda, I'm gonna let you start putting those on there. On yes, okay. so we're doing, um, these are black bean brownies. Now we all know how fabulous black beans and brownies go together, right? Um, a lot of people will turn their nose up at them, but they certainly are sweetened with not only um, our dates, but then we have the cocoa in there and it really does make a very nice show. And Debbie, on the cocoa, um, are you buying the kind that's not alkaline? Uh, you know, this is Dutch cocoa and I was buying the one that's not alkaline and I do have that in my cabinet, but this is, um, Dr. Greger said it, when you're doing sweets, that he likes this Hershey's special. So I said, well, if Dr. Greger can do it, I can too. <laughs> Okay, so then we are uh, just using a cherry, um, pure cherry preserve. Um, and it is made with monk fruit. Um, so it's just a cherry pre preserve. And we did this because we are going to have a bread. And the bread is our, our bread is our chocolate pumpkin bread. Now, Linda, why don't you tell us what you like, think about this chocolate pumpkin bread? Oh, uh, well, the, it's my favorite, and my husband's too. And when I tr first tried this recipe, um, I've had them every, every night since then, although I don't always have one, but my husband has one every night. So I'm on a chocolate uh, muffin, pump, chocolate pumpkin muffin run. You know how you kind of eat things that you like, and you eat them and eat them, and then you get tired, so... Okay, but I'm going to tell you something a little bit different. Um, my recipe does not include this, but you may want to write this down. We're always talking about fiber, and I like to include a lot of fiber in um, some of my muffins or my bread like this. And so, bran buds or fiber one, the old-fashioned fiber one, 
Uh, this adds a significant amount of fiber. So I take half of my whole wheat flour, I cut it in two, so this recipe calls for two cups of whole wheat flour. And so I cut that in half and use one cup of all bran. And I'll put it in the food processor or in the high speed blender and get that chopped up pretty well and then put it in with the flour after the flour has been sifted. And then I will mix that together and it'll just add some more fiber. Um, uh, you know, some of us who are already plant-based probably are getting a significant amount of fiber. However, those people that um, I like to share these breads with probably aren't getting as much fiber as they could be getting. So this kind of gives them an added dose. Okay, I'm just adding some fruit here because uh, we're gonna be using the, the fruit with the hummus. So we're just going to kind of give Oops. it a little color and spiff it up a little bit here. And so then the next piece is we're going to add some mangoes. And these are just sliced mangoes. And when you have these beautiful dessert hummuses, we are using these in place of dessert. And so, um, you know, it's great to use as, um, you know, fruit with it. Your fruit is naturally sweet, and this makes a great alternative. For those people who are going into the office, go ahead. For those people who are going into the office still, this fruit and hummus makes an excellent snack. It certainly is something that you can put in a little Tupperware container, um, have your fruit with you, even if it's just an apple, and it will be an excellent, excellent snack for your midday or afternoon. Okay, the next thing we are doing are just adding blueberries. We're filling in our spots. And we also have some beautiful kiwi. And we're going to sprinkle some cranberries. And some kiwis. Some and beautiful kiwis. kiwis, yes. So, you know, make this special. Uh, show your family how much you love them by adding a little pizzazz. Now, you know, if you have your fruits and your fruit and your hummus already prepared, then all you have to do, here you go. Um, all you have to do is, um, and now I'm just putting a few nuts out. So it's a fruit and nut board. Okay, so I am going to turn this around. KZ, I'd like you to please, oh, wait a minute, let me get a few cashews. Everybody loves cashews. If you eat them. Yes, if you eat them. Okay, so this is our finished board. Maybe zoom out just a hair. So, are there any questions about that? Do you think that would wow your, your family one Christmas afternoon? Well, I'll tell you what, um, Tiffany wants to know if this is recorded because I think she wants to maybe make what you're doing and have a, a sample to look at when she creates it. So, Actually, she, Tiffany, we are recording it. And um, Casey, you are recording this, right? Yes. Okay, so it is being recorded and it will be put on my website. Oh, it goes on your website. Okay, good. Thank yes. You. So does that look pretty? Let's see. Now we're going to move this down. I'm going to move this over. Let's slide it over here. We're Okay, so as you pull in the next uh, cutting board, one thing uh, Rachel did tell us a uh, little while no, later. Move the whole camera over. Yes, Kathy. Was that um, she did remember that you're supposed to get cutting boards that do not have made in China on them. Okay, 
So y'all heard it from the, the researcher. Okay, is this not a beautiful board? <laughs> is that a yes? Okay, so you can see why I was not able to, to um, decide on just a couple of boards because all of them are so gorgeous. Okay, so now we are moving into our vegetables. And our vegetables are so very, very important. Our very fun on the vegetables. We did hear from Tiffany and Nancy that the board looks delicious and beautiful. Oh, good, good. Okay, so we are going to start. And uh, this is beet hummus. And I don't know if y'all have tried beet hummus or not. We know that it is filled with nitric oxide or um, it, the potential to, uh, to make nitric oxide once it's um, in your body. But anyway, this is our beet hummus and we are putting it in a red bell pepper so it looks very, very festive. And on top, we have it garnished with fennel. So it just adds a little bit of green, a little touch of class. And then the next hummus that we have is our black bean hummus. And once again, we have just a few sprigs of um, our dill here. And so we're getting our herbs on this. The next thing that we have is our smoked tomato uh, cheese ball. And of course, we know that it's not a cheese ball. I wanted to show you this because this is the smoked tomatoes that we are using. Can you see that? Okay, and I'm going to show it over here to this camera as well. So the smoked tomatoes um, are part of this. Now, the recipe says that if you do not have, or if you cannot find smoked dry tomatoes, then you would want to use liquid smoke, and I give the proportions for that, okay? And I'm going to and, add... No, um, Andrea really thought that that beautiful color of the beets was perfect for Christmas and Valentine's. So this might be something to plan ahead on. Exactly, exactly. And you this is... Tomatoes have oil um, in them at all? Um, I do not believe so, Kathy. Oh, you, you know, they write so small on this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm adding some red pepper here while Debbie's checking that out. Red bell pepper strips. There is no oil added. It says prepared with sulfur dioxide to retain color, but it shows no oil. And this, for those who shop at Publix, this is in the produce department. Okay, so we are using our veggies or we're going to make this very plentiful with veggies. And if you want to hand me those over there. Now, I, so yesterday, if you were with us on the Bach Tower Blue Zone, um, we use fennel. So this is actually fennel that we are using. Now, if you don't like fennel, if you don't like the anise flavor, then certainly, here, yeah. certainly you can um, use celery instead, but we thought we'd have it, and it looks beautiful. It's nice and solid. So now we're just filling in. So once you have your key ingredients, and I recommend that you do it in odd numbers, we've got three of the keys, you know, the, the cheese ball, the two different hummuses, and so then you start filling in. And you want it to look beautiful and plentiful. Now, and I'm saying that, I have seen some boards on Pinterest, and they only have a few things. If your family is like my family, you're going to be replenishing that board every 10 to 15 minutes. And that's not going to be too pleasing for you. So that's why I say make it plentiful. It, it looks bountiful. So, you know, you want it to look appetizing and you don't want people to think that you are shortchanging them, right? You want to, them to, to think that there's plenty to eat. Yes. As this healthy vegetables, particularly. Well, you know, if you make it look beautiful, they, 
will have absolutely no idea that they're eating healthy. I mean, you don't have to advertise that. We're going to add a few crackers here. You want to tell about the crackers, then? Yeah, so let's talk about crackers. Um, you know, we are trying to find things that do not have added oil. Uh, Mary's Gone Crackers, I have never seen this before until I received a package from um, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and we, all of the Food for Life instructors had a challenge to really talk about breast cancer during October, so they sent me a box of these crackers, and they're very good. Now, they do have a lot of seeds in them, and we know those seeds are going to be very healthy for us, but we don't want to eat too many of them. So there's no added oil in these Mary's Gone Crackers. We are also using pretzel chips because they have no added oil to them. And we are using Crunch Master Grain Free as well. These do not have added oil in them. Oh, I apologize. They do have a little bit of added oil, so I apologize. But it's only a half of, no. Anyway, they do have a little bit of added oil. It's just not a, a whole lot of it. Okay? So, can you grab the tomatoes again? Because we've got questions about the brand name on them, because that sounds really good to people. So, it's California Sun Dried, Sun Dried Tomatoes. That's yeah. the brand name, California? Yes. California Sun Dried is the name. And the web address is C A L, as for Cal, Sun Dry. So C A L S U N D R Y dot com. And they also have these and just plain tomato. Well, it's really good to see smoke ones. I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen those. Well, the, the flavor is fabulous. It, it really is fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. This is our, I'm going to call it our cheese board. But look how beautiful that is. And should I cut this cheese ball to show yeah, them what it looks yeah, like on the inside? Yeah. So just so you see how beautiful that is on the inside. So it really um, does look super, super great. And it looks like cheese, right? Or a, one of those cheese balls. Again, the cameraman could sample that for us. Yes, cameraman. <laughs> okay, so for everybody who knows, the cameraman is my husband, and he is doing a fabulous job. He sure is, Debbie. I mean, that is the most gorgeous play. Vicki said she didn't want anybody to take anything off of it because they mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi appreciates um, that you're giving tips along the way. They're, they're very helpful um, in okay. knowing how to put together something like this. Okay. Well, I'm glad. And, and if there are any questions, please do not hesitate to, to let us know. Okay. So we only have two more boards and we have really saved the easy boards for last. And I'm going to clear off some things because we want to have all of the boards on here. Okay, so this is, this is the next board. And this board has personality. So let's see if we can move the camera down. Both cameras maybe, love. So this board has personality because it has a crack in it. But look how beautiful it is. Um, and this set, sits on... Um, little pedestals, pedestals yeah. yeah so it really does look super super nice um and kz let's see wait a minute we're we got to get the everything straight here so that the recording is good and and center it some okay this is what happens when you have one, only one cameraman and only one camera okay so <laughs> Tiffany says he's doing a great job, and you better let him have first dibs on the <laughs> Yes, after everything is done, we will. Yeah, but he is doing a great job. And you know what? 
Um, and I gotta share this because he is my backup man. So when I'm out here doing this, he's doing the dishes for me. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. you know what? Um, I know not all Food for Life instructors have that opportunity, but um, I have a very special husband. Okay, so you know what? New Year's Day, New Year's Eve is always a very special time and we want to celebrate. So we are doing caviar for our celebration. And of course, this is beluga caviar made with beluga lentils. And I think I had this turned the other way. So these are actually made from lentils and they're super, super great. I will boil them plain and then I will add some scallions, you know, I'll just saute, water saute scallions and some garlic and put it in the lentils the last 15 minutes before they are done cooking and it just brings out the flavor. But it is so great. And then we have cream cheese. Now, in my book, I actually give you a recipe for a plant-based cream cheese, but we don't always have the luxury of making all of these things. Uh, so I cheated and I went to Kite Hill. Can you see that okay? So Kite Hill, and this is a chives cream cheese. And they actually had this as a special at Publix. So I was very happy that we were able to get it. And, but anyway, so if you want to you know, um, cheat, not cheat, a but a shortcut. a shortcut, that's it. Yeah. I should not think that shortcuts are cheating. But anyway. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they're Sometimes cheating. I feel like I'm cheating when I don't make it myself. So anyway, um, it is processed, but it is still good. Uh, the next thing um, we have are chives. Once again, I did the shortcut and I did the bottle of chives and it's super, super great. But folks, sometimes we, oh, wait a minute, let me get that up close. Um, yeah. Okay, there it is. So Lighthouse Chives. We are all very busy. And if you're not busy, become a Food for Life instructor and things will get very, very busy for you. Okay, so what, how do we normally do this? We always do a little bit of cream cheese on our cracker. And then we put a little bit of our caviar. And then we put a little bit of our chives on top. And you have the perfect little appetizer. And if you want, you can have several of these already prepared so that your guests know how to prepare them. But look how beautiful that board is. And that is what we call our vegan caviar. Now, how many people think that they would enjoy that? I will tell you, I um, on all of these pictures that I made, I enjoyed eating the, the samples that I made because they're very good. Well, Deb, maybe we should ask the cameraman how he thinks, yeah. how he thinks about it. Casey, just, try this. Yeah, just... Susanna said it looks great. Spectacular. Spectacular. Oh, spectacular. So he likes yeah, that. He likes it. That's a winner. Okay. It would be at my house. So let's move this one down here. Okay. And then we're going to do our very last board. Kathy, are there any questions? Well, um, Tiffany just wants you to know that um, she can give you your, her address if you're going to send samples to Tiffany. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So the next thing, how many times have you gone to a festivity and had uh, meatballs in a crock pot or meatballs somewhere. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I have seen those meatballs on the platter. So today we do not want to disappoint for all of those people who want to see meatballs. We have those meatballs. And these of course are plant-based meatballs. 
and we have three dipping sauces. Um, the first dipping sauce is your typical mustard, um, yellow mustard, and then we also have a vegan horseradish. And um, we know that horseradish is super, super great for us. And um, if you have a sinus problem, you just eat some of that horseradish sauce and those sinuses will clear up instantly almost. And so Linda is uh, putting out our meatballs and these are super great. Uh, Julie, and for those people who were at our activity yesterday uh, with Bach Tower, uh, these are the same meat, um, the same recipe that we use for the hamburgers. And the hamburgers come out great. Um, it's a very firm burger, okay? These are very firm uh, meatballs. And let me just say, they freeze exceptionally well. So when you're looking for um, a shortcut, prepare something in advance and freeze it. And then, you know, if people come over, you probably already have um, maybe a hollandaise sauce or a brown mustard. Most people have yellow mustard. And, you know, down here is a barbecue sauce. And those are usually staples in our house. I don't know about yours, but those are always, Linda is throwing cranberries. Well, not intentionally. <laughs> Anyways, these cranberries just, are having a good time rolling around. These are for decorative purposes mainly. Yes. So just to fest, make it a little festive for the holidays. So. Okay, so here is our, let me move this down. Here is our meatball platter. And, um, whoops. And our out of control cranberries. Oh, Debbie, would um, it be? Um, could you just let's see who was asking this? Vicky, Vicky wants to know if it's cold or hot meatballs, or are they warm or hot? Um, they could be either. And um, uh, of course, right now they're cold. But yes, you could have them either way. But this recipe is actually very um, good, um, cold or hot, Kathy. Okay, and um, Vicki was commenting too that this would be a wonderful thing for a wedding reception because you just have to have meatballs at wedding reception. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But you know what? Um, the flavor is so good. You know, when you start adding flavors, you really... Um, People don't, as long as it's good, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. As long as it's good, people don't necessarily care what's in it. And Linda, you said something earlier. We, you know, the very first thing we do when we see something that activates it is our eyes. You know, we, what was it you we said? Eat, we eat with our eyes. You know, when yeah. something looks appetizing and appealing, then it makes it taste better. At least you think it's going to taste better most of the time. Yeah. So, but you know, they all of these have great flavor in them, and um, I think they're easy. The hummuses, the beans, all of this can be frozen and taken out of the fr mm -hmm. freezer, stirred up, and put out quite easily. So I don't want y'all to be afraid of it. Yeah. So a lot of these things you can make ahead, Deb. Why don't, why don't we talk about what you can make ahead here? The brownies on the dessert platter on the yeah should we move this down or yeah or maybe or just, maybe the just go through each one maybe and just okay so let me pull the platter up right. um can you somehow move the camera this way love? And, and tell us deb how long they keep in the refrigerator after oh that's if, a good in, idea in case they're not all eaten which is not the case most of the okay time. so kz is moving everything down let me move this Debbie, while you're doing, while you're getting reset up, we do have some questions. Awesome. Um, um, let's see. Nancy was curious about. I know you're going to send us the recipe, but just just because we're curious now, what is the main ingredient in the meat, meatballs? Oh, black. Oh, thank you for asking that question. That was silly of me not to 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 say that. So the meatballs are black beans, and you have them partially mashed you have um, and I roasted a sweet potato 
So when we're talking about roasting, or as I said, roasting, um, and the beets were actually roasted as well, when you roast something for a, an extended period of time, then you're actually bringing the sweetness out. And so the, sw the sweet potato that went into these meatballs actually was quite sweet because it was um, roasted. And so the other piece of that is going to be your um, old fashioned oats. And you can grind up your old fashioned oats and that's what it says in the directions. But actually, um, this recipe I made with the whole oats, and it looks very, very good. Let me just hold one up for you. So you can, I don't know if you can really see that. Deb, they have this recipe, right? Yes, y'all have this recipe. Okay, and what about, let's see, and I'm going to say this name wrong, Jody, Jody, um, is, what is the, what are the dipping sauces again on the meatballs? Because there's three, and I'm, I'm not sure I got all three of them either, so I'm glad she asked. Okay, so we have a vegan holiday sauce. Okay. And, okay, so this is, this is um, horseradish mustard and it's Annie's, okay? And um, just to say, uh, most of your horseradish sauces are not vegan, okay? But this one is. So if you can find that brand, so it's horseradish mustard. And then we have a yellow mustard, and this is just your Heinz yellow mustard. And then the last one is your barbecue sauce. And now this was not, sorry, we have a little accident going on over here. Um, this um, barbecue sauce is just your regular barbecue sauce. Kathy, what is uh, the one that the Esselstyns recommend? I ran out of it, but is it bone sucking good or something like that? Debbie, I think you're right on that. I think it might be bone sucking something, but whatever it is, it's the one without so much Skating sugar balls. and then have oil. Uh, yeah. Vicki says it is Skating bone balls. sucking. Um, now, I want to go back to the hummus now because we've had several okay. asked about hummus. Andrea wondered if, if you really could freeze hummus, and Naomi says that's great if you can. So tell us, can you have you frozen the hummus before? I have frozen the hummus. And I honestly believe by making it with the tofu that, and mixing the, the beans and the tofu and all of the recipes, and here is one of the, um, this is the extra firm tofu, but that's all I had in the cab cabinet. But they have the silk, well this is silken, but extra firm. So they also have um, just the plain silken. So if you um, mix those together, I think it's creamier. I have frozen hummus before, and this will probably, some of this will be getting frozen because I have a significant amount of it. But I think if you just blend it up, but I can't swear to that because yeah. it doesn't last too long in my house. Just on a note on the tofu, they also have a, a, a low-fat version. Oh, right. Yeah. So right. If a lighter you're, version if you're, if you're careful about, you know, making sure you don't get too much yeah. fat. I just don't always have that opportunity. This is the only one that Chamberlain's carries, and that's where I get it. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon, just to say, Amazon does have this, and they have all of the different brands or all of the different types. So if you are a prime buyer, like I am. And, and it's really good because you can store it in your, can, in your pantry. It has a good shelf life. Right. So it's, uh, it's very handy to have on... Dick. Yeah. Well, we've gotten a lot of positive comments. Let's see, Suzanne was just taken with that beluga caviar, and I, that is truly unique. Now, you said it was made with beluga, beluga lentils. Black lentils. Tell us what those are. Well, they're black lentils, but there is a black lentil called beluga. But these are just small. Let me grab the jar. Hold tight. And um, Linda, maybe you could answer this. 
Oh no, I'll wait till she gets back because these are positive comments. <laughs> I'm here too. Uh, which one do you like the best, Linda? Um, actually, I think I like the meatballs. I like those good. Uh, the cheese ball, I haven't had an opportunity to, to sample that yet, but uh, actually, I could probably eat every every one of these and enjoy them. So. Oh wait a minute! What did you like best? Yeah, but those are those are uh, <laughs> the the uh, black, black bean brownies. Black bean brownies are not on my diet. I have to really be very careful about eating too much chocolate. So those were my. I had a little taste of those, and those are excellent. You so, like uh, them? Yeah. Any chocoholics out there? <laughs> yeah. So the chocolate is very good. It really is. Yeah. Okay, so and the lentils there. These are the lentils, and you know what? I, Angel, can you zoom in? Um, yeah, I, I don't have the brand here, but um, you know it's interesting because what happens? Um, I, I don't know that that's really focused, but anyway, they're black lentils. I originally got this type of lentils, and this is timeless. And I really do like this brand of lentils. Um, they do have it in the black lentils. Is that Amazon, Deb? Um, this is all Amazon, yes. And so why I'm saying this, Timeless is an excellent brand of lentils. They, they cook up nicely. They're very smooth. Um, but for this caviar, um, these were super, super good. And but I do not remember the name of it. But when I bought them, I ended up getting three pounds of them, so I will have them for quite a while. Okay, and another place you can get the black caviar lentils, uh, Naomi says, is Rancho Gordo, and she she really uh, connected me with that company. And oh my gosh, their beans are so good, they're delicious. Debbie, it is so cute, all these comments. Um, Kathy, can you put Ran or Naomi, or maybe that's in the comments, the Rancho Gordo. Naomi, write it again and put it to everyone for me, would you? Oh, Vicki just okay. did. Vicky, Vicky okay, did. good. Yeah, um, but the comments, you know, it goes back to that Tiffany mentioned people eat with your eyes, and, and Dennis says, well, you eat with your nose first, then your eyes, and last your mouth. <laughs> and, you know, if those were warm meatballs, the nose would definitely pick up on them, wouldn't they? And of course, if you just take those brownies out, um, Dennis says, great job, ladies, beautiful presentations, fabulous ideas, um, just lots of good comments here about how much they appreciate what you did. They're just beautiful. Well, thanks. I do want to mention something because, you know, you could do, I said, step out of your box. You could have a platter like this and have a, um, a crock pot of oatmeal, but then think about um, what all of the things that you could have. You could have chopped dates, you could have raisins, you could have blueberries, your strawberries, but you can make a beautiful display for Christmas mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. um, Hanukkah morning. I, I'm not, I don't know if there's a specific day for Hanukkah, so I apologize if I'm stepping on somebody's toes. But you could do this for a breakfast or for an afternoon brunch. Step out of the box. This makes your family feel special, that you have done something special, and all you've done is arranged it nicely instead of putting it in bowls. And we wish you were here with us so you yes. could help us eat this. And Kathy, to answer your question, um, I'll have a little bit of everything after this is over, yes. and I'll get back with you on what I like the best. <laughs> Okay, Linda, that sounds great. Nancy says, fantastic presentation. Thank you so much. Tiffany, bravo. And I say, super, Well, super. thank you. Now, I do want to mention that I do have a class starting in January. This is going to be healthy eating. It's also weight management. Uh, so we all know that COVID has put an added... Um, cushion on many of us. So certainly I would love you to join that class. It is the Food for Life and um, it is the Kickstart program. I want to thank Linda for being here. I also want to thank going back to Food for Life. I need to thank all of my Food for Life and co-instructors. And Kathy, if you can put us on gallery, please. 
And I would just like to recognize all of the Food for Life instructors. And um, if y'all would. Okay, Debbie, they're going, and they're probably going to have to put themselves on gallery. Let's see. Well, let's see. If you'll take us off spotlight. I took you off spotlight. So now let's see. If you all choose gallery view, then we might can see all of the Food for Life. Wait a minute. How did that work? Did that okay, work? there. Kathy, you took me off there. Okay. So all of the food for life. There's Tiffany. I'm going to see, I'm going to say you, your name. So no, Tiffany, Suzanne, Susanna, and Dennis. And we also, I thought I saw, I thought Denise was in here too. Did, did y'all see Denise? Yeah. Uh, I saw I saw Denise. Yes. Yeah. So any anyways, um, food for life instructors. Thank y'all for being here. I really do appreciate it. So are there any more questions? Just more positive comments. You will have to see all those when you look at the chat. Okay. So once again, there are a couple of things that I have to add. Some pictures that I have to add to our um, cookbook. Um, but you will be getting the cookbook either later on today, no later than tomorrow morning, okay? So I truly wish you all a very beautiful Christmas holiday season, and um, thank you for joining us. And I hope that y'all will join me for the Kickstart program starting January 4th, okay? Thanks. Happy holidays.